Hi, welcome. Let's talk about retirement and what it can look like for you. We get to retire in a lot of different ways. Uh, Black women are taking control over what this next phase of their life looks like. And we're going to talk to a special guest about the, uh, I think we're going to call it unusual, adventurous mm -hmm. uh, ways that she is embracing retirement. If you're new here, welcome to Exodus Summit. Uh, Exodus Summit is a platform for Black women planning a sabbatical, a move abroad, uh, planning to live nomadically. Um, if you're interested in any of these things, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications, ring the notification bell so that you'll be notified when we post a video or when we do a live stream. Um, it's, this is a community of Black women trying out new things. My name is Stephanie Perry. I'm one of the creators of Exodus Summit. Uh, I'm a house sitter and uh, on my way to Costa Rica, my name is Rashida Dow. I am a career break coach. I uh, live in Mexico City. Right now I'm in Merida, Mexico, another popular uh, retirement location. And, and yeah, uh, we, are, <laughs> we are joined today by <laughs> Maggie, who's a member of our community, who's going to talk to us about her retirement and her adventures. So we're very yeah. happy to have you with us here today, Maggie. We really appreciate you taking the time. Oh, thank you. I'm totally stoked that I'm talking to you ladies. I feel like I'm talking to royalty. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't be excited. It's just us. Okay. <laughs> but I had your expectations just a little bit. <laughs> well, um, I'm a registered nurse, an advanced practice nurse, and I retired a couple of years ago. I am Haitian born. I've been in the state since I was 18. And um, I plan on working till I was like in my 80s. And then it was like, I was telling somebody, I said, in the last 10, 15 years, my mind has shifted about work, life. So it was like, why do I need to work till I'm 80? Uh, something happened in the workplace and I'm like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm out of here. So I retired with no plans, really. I wasn't looking to work. I taught a class for a little bit, which I enjoyed. I had visited Panama, I think in 2017. And then I went back in 2018 and it just felt really good, but it wasn't to, it wasn't like a, a trip to figure out if I wanted to retire there. I wanted to see the canal. That's the only way I got into Panama and it just felt really good. So in 2019, I believe before, no, 21, before COVID, I had gotten COVID at work. So I was sick. I was in the hospital. It was, again, another thing that says you just need to think about life, you know, do what you want to do and decide what you want to do. So I went to Africa. We all kind of fell for that uh, year of the return and all the promotion. So I was gun ho I was going to go to Ghana. I was going to retire there. And because I was still in the mindset that I could still be doing something entrepreneurial, I said, well, maybe I can go open an assisted living facility or I can teach. So that's how Ghana came into the picture. And I hooked up with this woman out of the UK. She, what she does, she sets like internship type experiences for people, you know, for uh, expats who want to go back. So I hooked up with her and she hooked me up with the, with the hospital in Ghana. So I went on a kind of an internship kind of trip. So I went to this particular hospital in Tema, which is like a, a, a city outside of a car. And I was there for three weeks in the hospital, just talking, asking questions, getting a feel for the healthcare system and the mindset, the mentality. It was an eye opener. And then as I was nearing the end and I did like an exit interview with them, I was talking to this the director of the nursing group. And he was telling me, I said, well, how about teaching? And we talk, talk about the mindset, how everything is set, you can't change anything. I was like, well, there's some things I observed that could be improved. How can I, as a, as a foreigner come, if I wanted to you know, do some teaching, there was a, they had a school of nursing right next to the hospital. And they're like, oh, no, you cannot change anything. Everything is set in, tone, in stone. And it's like, you can't even, if you're teaching, you have to sit up there on a pedestal somewhere. You can even mingle with the, with the students. And I was like, 
this is going to be a little bit difficult for me. And I said, well, can I get them to start thinking critically? No, 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 can't do that. So my mind was like, I don't know that I could function in that environment. I need to have more flexibility of mind and be able to explore. So I said, "Mm -mm, I couldn't. And the infrastructure was a challenge. I remember on a Friday night, I was in an Uber for an hour and a half trying to get home (laughs) on a trip that usually would last maybe 20 minutes. The people are lovely. Uh, I looked at healthcare because I do have my list of the things that I needed to have in order to consider a place. And it was like, no, no, no. It's beautiful. It looks great. The, The beaches are beautiful. But for what I wanted... I did not feel that that was going. So it's like after the three weeks, I was gun ho That wasn't going to be it. Now, I do have a five-year visa. I want to revisit that. I'm not saying that it's never going to happen. But I knew at the time it wasn't going to be something I wanted to do. So I said, well, let me try another country. I still had some time because, um, yeah, I, had, I think I had taken t- about a month off at that time. And I said, let me go to Rwanda. So Rwanda took a five-hour plane ride, and Rwanda was gorgeous. Anybody who's been there will tell you, the cleanest city in Africa. But I landed like at 2 a.m., and I had to get in an Uber. The guy to pick me up wasn't there. It was someone else. Anyway, it was an adventure in the middle of the night. We drove maybe two miles, and then we got to a checkpoint. And there was (laughs) the police with the bazookas or whatever they had. It was like, oh, my God, 3 o'clock in the morning, what's going to happen? But anyway, I noticed that there was a heavy police presence, and I just could not get a feel for the people's psyche there. And when I went to that um, genocide museum, that did me in. I just was so emotionally spent after I saw that. And I was like, I don't know. For the for different reason, that didn't resonate with me. Because even though I'm a left brain, I'm very logical. I have my list of one, two, threes, and fours. But my spirit needs to, you know, uh, get with that place. And I did not feel that. Okay. And I don't want to say that too loud because some people get offended <laughs> if you say that Africa didn't, you know, it's like I didn't kiss the ground when I got off the plane, <laughs> any of that. But it just wasn't. Yeah, I mean, different things work for different people. So exactly. it's exactly really you have to be open to that. Check it out, yeah, and that not yeah. everything is going to work for everybody. So right. that's good. So right. where did you land after Rwanda? Yeah, after Rwanda, I, no, I came back home. So I was like, okay, it's back, <laughs> back to the drawing board. We have, I have to consider some different places. So I decided, okay, it's going to be somewhere in Africa, and Africa is not coming up top of the list right now so the caribbean somewhere in the caribbean and then i was like oh i really love panama let me go check that out again so i made another trip and it was like each time i went the feeling was stronger that this could be a place that i could see myself living for the next who knows 10 15 years so i started doing the research then because before it was just to see the canal so now i was like okay let me um explore more of Panama. I love the weather. I know some ladies sitting here don't like the hot. (laughs) (laughs) But I like the tropical. Um, The food was amazing. Uh, The freshness of everything. The infrastructure was pretty good compared to Ghana. It was a plus. I was like, okay, that's good. And the people were very People were very nice in Ghana, I have to tell you. They're the the nicest, happiest people that I've met. But they were nice here too, I mean, in Panama. So I was like, okay, check, check, check. But my list of retirement places was, it was a place that I should feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I felt comfortable in uh, in Panama. Mm -hmm. Um, The weather, that was number two. The food was number three. And then I said, I need to find a place where I could comfortably retire, a place where I can build community, that I'm not going to be the first person to be there, but there's a community I can tap into. 
And that, that was there in Panama. I started looking at other people's Facebook group. I reached out. I joined, you know, WhatsApp group. So I started really getting a feel for what, what's happening in Panama. The last thing was healthcare. I needed to go someplace that if something were to happen to me, it wouldn't break the bank. I'm a nurse practitioner. I know what goes on in our healthcare system and how broken and inequitable. You guys know the whole stories uh, here. In Panama, oh my God, having been there six months, it is true what they say. Doctors sit and talk to you for an hour and a half. You, They give you their cell numbers after they do a procedure. Tell me how you feel. And every American is like, what? He gave me his cell phone number? And everything is much more affordable for um, if you want to just have like a, a checkup or a normal, regular, yearly stuff, everybody pays out of pocket for it, yeah. even though you could have some kind of insurance plan. A lot of expats go to private hospitals where they have to pay cash, give a credit card, but you could go to the public hospital and pay next to nothing. Mm -hmm. This person just had his appendix taken out. And he went to the public hospital and paid $390 for like a three, four day hospital, including doctors, x-rays. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we're like, sign me up. <laughs> I talked to my friend. She said, I told everybody, take me to that hospital, <laughs> not the other ones. Mm -hmm. So it started to check off all the boxes that were important to me. And what I tell people, when you're trying to think of retirement, you have to know yourself. You have to know what you're looking for and what you're going to be comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And you all must have, you know, there are some non-negotiables. And for me, those were people talk about the language and I speak Spanish too. So okay. that makes it easier. Okay. But if you don't, it's not a deal breaker. You know, people do so much with Google Translate and Duolingo, everybody's learning. We, we have groups where we practice Spanish. It's not going to be a deterrent for you to retire. So when I saw that, so I made three trips. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth trip, I said, oh, let me start my residency pro uh, process. Mm -hmm. And I, again, through the groups, they hook you up an attorney. It was bam, bam, bam. Boom, it was done. So... Mm -hmm. Even though if I think of another place that I want to explore, but I already have residency in Panama, mm -hmm. I rented an apartment and I have contacts there. I, I made a good friend there. So there is nothing about Panama I don't like. The noise in the city can be a little bit of a, yeah. But I travel throughout the country and I know when I come back from the Peace Corps, I'm probably gonna go in the interior somewhere it's a little bit less noisy. Okay. But I've, I've made my, uh, I, I understand, you know, I've explored it. So I know where they're at. Thank you for running through your list of uh, considerations, the list of things that you considered feeling comfortable. I'm going to run back through it because somebody's, yes. wait, 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 to say that again. <laughs> it's where you could feel comfortable, a uh, place with weather that you liked, which mm -hmm. is different for everybody, a place, <laughs> yes. uh, place with community and people, a community of people that you could tap into, people who mm -hmm. are already there, who, you know, who you mm -hmm. would already want to form community with right. and healthcare. And also you mentioned infrastructure. Right. Was this list the, was this list the same before you did your first scouting trip or did the list or the priorita priorities change? Over time? No, I think the I think the priorities have remained constant for me because knowing myself, I don't see myself as a pioneer. Mm -hmm. You know, like you ladies, I'm not looking to rough it out. Yes. You know what I mean? I don't want to go somewhere where I have access to electricity. There's no internet. People talk about it. I, I hate to talk about Ghana. People would think I'm hating on Ghana, but I'm not. But people will tell you they'll be without water for like two weeks. And I'm mm -hmm. like, what do you do? Yeah. It's just a little too, you know, um, pioneer for me. <laughs> so that to me, I want to help. I want to enjoy myself, but I don't want to rough it out. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk about a little bit about feeling comfortable. You know, mm -hmm. after 2016 and the year of return, a lot of people talk about Americans running away from America. Well, in a, in a sense, we, 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 we were, we are right? For different reasons. Mm -hmm. 
But when you go to Panama, 70 plus percent of the population is brown. So even though they're Metisos, which means they're a mixture of European uh, indigenous, a lot of Caribbean people there. So they may look like us, but the hair texture might be different, mm -hmm. right? So you, that alone makes you feel comfortable. You don't feel like you're sticking out. Right. The other thing people talk about in Panama is that the police are everywhere, but they're so friendly. You don't feel mm -hmm. like every time you see somebody, in, you know, you t tense up. We don't have that in Panama. There are no Karens in Panama. So that creates an environment where you can let your hair down. Because if I'm going to retire, I need to feel comfortable. If I'm walking down the street, I don't have to worry. Even though I got pickpocketed. Oh, no. So that's why when people say, oh, there's no crime in Panama. And I'm like, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Because it's not utopia. Mm -hmm. I was just too, you know what I'm saying? I was in that honeymoon. Oh, too free. You know, too free. And yeah. then, yep, they took my, took all my credit card, drew my bank account. <laughs> it was like, wow. so I did a video about that and I said, don't do what I did. Use your cross body, keep your, <laughs> everything mm -hmm. close to you. I had a backpack. Okay. You know, and they unzipped okay. it and got it. It's my fault. Okay. It was my fault. But, Talking about that, you still have to be aware of your surroundings. So it's mm -hmm. not like there is nothing wrong that happens in Panama. Yeah. But the one, two, three, four, five things that are important to me are there. Mm -hmm. And that's what keeps me that keep me in Panama. And a lot of other people too. Right. Yes. Yeah. I, I want to double back on healthcare for a second. Yes. Um, as a medical professional, mm -hmm. you talked about the expense of healthcare and the availability, but I want to check in on the quality as well. A lot of people, especially excellent. retirees, are going to be concerned about that. No, say excellent, excellent. A okay. lot of the private hospitals are affiliated with U.S. hospitals. Okay. A lot of the doctors there have trained in the U.S. Okay. And you may think about the public hospitals that the quality of care is lower. It's not because even though they may be in a private hospital setting, they're required by law to work maybe once or two days a week in a public hospital just uh -huh. to make things equitable. Oh. Yes. So I was looking at some data. I mean, Panama spends about $1,200 a, a year per resident. America, we spend like 10,000 and our health is no better. Mm -hmm. Panama's health rank, ranks higher than health in the U.S. Yeah, you know you mean, all that fresh air, all the fresh vegetable. That doesn't mean all, the diet is that good. All that fried food is fried there. Stuff, yeah. <laughs> Do you have private health, private insurance? No, no, because I turned sixty five last month and I have Medicare. Okay, okay. And, and then, then have, yeah, Medicare is not uh, accepted as we know it here. But if you go on a Medicare Advantage plan, if you go to those private hospitals, you pay and then you submit a claim to your private to your insurance company. I didn't know that was possible. That is. Oh, it is. Okay. It is. Yep. Okay. But some people get uh, what we call a catastrophic plan. Mm -hmm. It means if you break a leg, you know, and people that's happened to them, then they can go to the hospital with that plan. It's not for preventative care. Mm -hmm. It's for like if something happens to you and then they'll, you know, medivac you back to the U.S. Mm -hmm. So you can pay for that. But I'm talking about $130 a month. It's not that expensive. Okay. Uh, so most people, uh, I had a Cigna plan that was a worldwide Cigna plan when I was in between retirement and getting Medicare. I did that. And they cover whatever, wherever you are, you know, uh, including the U.S. and Panama and made sure of that. But yeah, the quality of care, I went there and I've had my teeth clean a couple of times and I went online. I'm like, oh, you did just a great job. So everybody started going to that dentist mm -hmm. and we all kind of share our experiences, good or bad, with the practitioners. But I have to say, on the average, everybody who's been to a Panamanian doctor has been very, super happy. So you talked about sharing, everyone sharing their medical, sharing their experiences. How did yeah, you we do that in our groups because, you know, if you've had, you know, somebody who did your hair or somebody who clean your teeth, somebody who clean your house. I mean, everybody shares everything. <laughs> because How did you meet this community of people? Where did they come from? Well, you interviewed uh, Black women expat. What's her Deborah. name? 
uh, Deborah, Valerie? No, Deborah is 60 plus. Okay. But we uh, have a black woman expat. She's the one who without her husband, Mary. Mary Goff, yes. We have that. And then there are like maybe 10 other groups that include, okay. you know, gringos. And we're all in there. Okay. Okay. Reading and getting information. Rental, uh, to get a driver's license, where the best food is. I mean, people share everything. Okay. And we Thank even you. had uh, Spanish practice, Spanish groups where we go meet somewhere, got coffee, and we just speak Spanish to each other. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's uh, people are really in tune with each other over there. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, I'm making a, a commercial for Panama, but it is true <laughs> that those of us who go there, we are happier. I have a friend who wanted to retire with her husband. They did their scouting trip and did all the research and he ended up dying uh, a year before they plan on going. She went. Anyway, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though the husband's not there. Okay. Your scouting trip was in what year? So you said that you visited in 2017 and 2018 to see the Panama Canal. What year did you do your scouting trip? Uh, when I started, when I returned from, from uh, Africa in 2021, that's when I started doing my, uh, my research. Okay. So I went back in 2022 and then I went twice in 2022, started my... Um, my visa process, and then got my residency in January of this year. Oh, congratulations. 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 Yeah. And you. you're not in Panama now because you're getting ready for your next adventure. Right. I came home uh, last Sunday, uh, giving myself a couple of weeks, you know, to say goodbye and pack and get a couple of things. And I'm flying out to Johannesburg on the 18th. Ooh, tell us about that. Ah, my God. That's another thing. When I came back from from uh, uh, Africa, because remember, I was in the mindset, I'm going to start a business there. I'm going to teach there. So when I scrapped that, I'm like, oh, let's go back to Panama. And I said, okay, even if I go to Panama, knowing me, I need to feel like I'm doing something. Mm -hmm. You ladies have found your, your thing uh -huh. that's blessing people, right? Mm -hmm. And I still have skills that I feel like I can still bless people with. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's why I always thought that I would be working till I'm, you know, in my 80s. So I started thinking, what would I do that could be uh, with my skills that could be a benefit to somebody else? So um, Doctors Without Borders, I look into that. I was like, OK, because I knew I wasn't going to stay in the U.S. That was another thing. I do not want to retire here and go old mm -hmm. in this country, because having been in the long term care setting, the nursing homes. Okay. So I started looking into things, but you know, someone asked me, how did you become aware of Peace Corps? And you know, I can't pinpoint one moment that I said the Peace Corps. Mm -hmm. I think it just came up as part of all the different things I was looking at. Right. And then I said, huh, let me just send an application and see what happened. I think they called me like in two days. I was like, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't something I was zeroing in. So when it came up, I was like, oh, no, oh, no. So I started talking to Lisa, Lisa, Malagasy Lisa. She's uh, because she was in the Peace Corps as an older volunteer. And we started communicating. And then I said in, on my application, they said, what would you like to serve? You have two options. You could say, I want Asia, Africa, Caribbean, or you could say wherever I'm needed. But I did zero in on Africa and the Caribbean. So initially, after the interview, the guy was like, oh, you would be the perfect candidate. I'm like, and I'm like starting to panic because I was like, oh, that was too fast. I'm not ready. <laughs> I was thinking about it. <laughs> so he's like, well, we have an opening in Madagascar. And I'm like, let me go see where that is again. <laughs> uh -huh. Sounds nice. Mm -hmm. So telling my family was like, you're all totally crazy. You're not going to Jamaica or somewhere close. You want to go to the, the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we started doing all, you know, there was a, an intensive uh, screening process for the Peace Corps. You feel like you're going into service. Yeah. All the medical stuff, all the uh, psychological interviews they're doing with you. So I passed those, thank God. And then we were gone ho to go into Madagascar. 
So I went to my practitioner and I had an, uh, she did an EKG and she's like, did you have a heart attack? I'm like, oh, I know of, but I knew I was post COVID and with COVID anything can happen. So the Peace Corps said, oh no, you can't go anywhere with that. You're gonna have to check it out. So they scratched Madagascar. So I went to my cardiologist, did all the workup that came back. I was fine. I was like, okay. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to Panama. So I'm starting to make plans. And boom, I got an invite again that says, oh, we have a position in South Africa, which you consider it. So I'm like, wow, okay, okay. I'm one of those, I grab opportunities when they come to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a thinker where I'm going to examine something until, you know, you get caught in too many details. And I was like, you know, Africa, I went to Ghana, that didn't work. Maybe South Africa, who knows? That's an opportunity. And then I'm going to work doing HIV training and education. So that kind of okay. ties in mm-hmm. with my uh, abilities. I'm like, yeah, why not? So I think I had to work on my family a little bit for them to, okay, we thought you were going to be home. Panama's not that far, but South Africa? <laughs> well, South Africa is closer, but Madag- easier to get to than Madagascar. Than Madagascar, yeah. definitely. Will you and, be in Johannesburg? I'm sorry? Will you be in Johannesburg or somewhere else? Johannesburg, we land in Johannesburg. Training happens in Pretoria. Okay. okay. And then they're going to just send you out God knows where. Okay. Yeah, so you don't know exactly where you're going to be. But I'm excited because I'm very curious usually about culture, language, food. So, yeah. So this is how I ended up um, going through the Peace Corps. So that's why I was in Panama only for six months because I knew my time was coming. And I said, I I can come back. You have to be in the country at least once every two years to keep your residency. You don't have to live there. So I'm going to come back next year just to keep it up. And then I return in 2025. If God gives me, give me health. So So your Peace Corps commitment is two years? It's two years and three months. You get three months of training and then 24 months on the ground. And then when you finish, you have an option to renew for another year. Some people have done three years. Okay. And then you return. Okay. What advice would you give to other retirees slash seniors? Can I say that? Can I say seniors? Yes. Or I, I get all my discounts. So I'm okay. yeah, right. <laughs> um, who are thinking about doing something to stay active, like the Peace Corps. What mm-hmm. would you tell them? Well, what I would say first is know thyself. Know what you want. If you want to just lounge on the beach, sipping on margaritas, it's okay. Mm-hmm. But if you're someone like me who feels the need to do something a little bit more that you want to give back more, you have options. Okay. Then um, just do that self-evaluation and then go for it. That's what I would, I would do. And again, know what your must-haves if you're going to be looking for a place. And then retirement could be you just want to volunteer in a school, you know. It could be, I mean, the thing is for us as retirees in Panama, you can't really work. So I started to look into volunteer opportunities, you know, because I'm, I have a soft spot for the indigenous people. So I started looking into different uh, places or, but then I knew I was going to leave. So it wasn't worth it for me to get into something and then say, oh, bye, I, I got to go. Yeah. And things don't move real fast in Panama, <laughs> so it's going to take you a little while. So I would say to that person, just understand you, what you need, what feeds you, and then go look for opportunities. And be open. If the opportunities come, it's like, oh, my God, I have got so far. I wanted to volunteer, but that's too far. No. I'm healthy. I have a passport. I can go. Mm-hmm. So that's I've always been a risk taker like that. Yeah. I'm not afraid to go. But again, if, if you're afraid to travel to, you know, to the Northeast and, you know, the South, take, take your time, yes. you know, get yourself to the point where you feel comfortable. Because some people in the Peace Corps can't handle it. Mm-hmm. Some people have had to come back. Okay. The isolation, the mental, you have to have like that mental capacity to self-direct and find information and live in a culture that you're not familiar with. I think I can do that. So again, know thyself. Know what what works for you. 
I know you're going to South Africa to work, but you know, Rashida and I will be in South Africa. I heard. I, I can't hope, wait. I hope we'll get to play around with you. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be the too. girl sipping, sipping in a coconut by the beach that we will not do. <laughs> We have coconut and more. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Exodus Summit uh, 2023 is coming up very soon. Can you tell yes. us, do you remember, do you know, do you, have you attended an actual summit? I don't oh, think so. I think I became aware of Exodus Summit when I came back from Africa. Okay. And uh, that's probably when I did a video about traveling alone, if you over 60 or something like that. But I'm very aware of you ladies. How did that? How did you become part of our community? Do you remember? I know that's the thing. I think I sent the video to sixty plus. I did join sixty plus mm -hmm. Black Women Expat okay. uh, with Valerie, and then I posted a video about my adventures in Ghana. And then she's like, "Oh yeah, I think it's a good video for people to see." And then of course, I, did I think I got an invite to join, and I've been watching you guys, your lives on on Sunday and Saturdays and. Even who is the other lady? Your friend Rashida. Adelia. Uh -huh. Adelia. Yeah, I watch Adelia too. So yeah, yeah no, I haven't uh, attended. I'm sorry to say. It's okay. <laughs> no, don't apologize. Okay. You're out here doing it. You're doing yeah. it. You don't need us. <laughs> I, think, I think my mindset was already there. And like I said, yeah. I'm a risk taker. I did not need that push to say, <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Because I've, you know, I've been a business owner. I, I take risks. That's right. Yeah, you don't mm -hmm. need us. Yeah. Uh, this year, Exodus Summit, friends, is October 6th through 9th, 2023. The theme of Exodus Summit 2023 is Three. location freedom, financial freedom, and time freedom for Black women. I think it, I saw a little bit of the live yesterday. Yeah, we just announced some exciting okay. speakers. I know. You guys, I'm <laughs> telling you. Yeah. If you're, you're creating a bunch of... Um, Older women that are just badasses. They're just like, I'm going. <laughs> Out here living. Out here living. I am going. And it's it's amazing. It really is. It's a movement. You know that. Yeah, it is a movement. It's wonderful it to see. It's wonderful to see. Um, there are women like you who are out doing their thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're always going to do their thing. But right, there are some right. women who just need to see it, who need to right. see it. Like you. See that it's doable and feasible. Yes, and then I agree. Off. They're off. So we're so glad that you talked to us today. Well, thank um, you. Thank you. We're going to share your Instagram handle in the description of this video, which is I retire, I travel. I travel. We can't wait to see what the oh, thank you so like. much. I know. I'm excited. Oh, yeah. you know, you're anxious. Yeah. I'm not anxious. I'm just excited Good. to see what's going to happen. Good. Well, we hope we see you at Exodus Summit this year. I cannot believe it's already. I know, I know. You guys say busy. I don't know <laughs> how you guys do it. Because I uh, used to, you know, set up uh, seminars. I know how much work goes into getting speakers and all that. That's that's a lot of work. It's work, but we're going to take some downtime. Believe I, that. Okay. Yes, <laughs> the rest of the year, see us. <laughs> the rest I of the year, I am. Gonna go and yeah. all kind of places. But this is, I think that's what life should be about, you know? traveling and then doing something that is worthwhile and helping somebody else yeah. there's nothing quite like it the satisfaction of seeing women free to do to live their life yes well thank you ladies for what you're doing too it's amazing thank you and thank you